All right, Shalom, Shalom to the elect of the nation of Israel, the elect of Yahweh Shai. All praises and glories due to Yahweh Bashem Yahshai Bashem Rakakwadash for giving us this knowledge, truth, understanding, especially in the times that we're living in, which is indeed a blessing that we have this truth to be our guide and light pursuant to Isaiah. 33 and 16 that says wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of our times and when it says wisdom and knowledge it's talking about this knowledge this truth this gospel all right so that being said yeah um the inspiration of this video comes from our teaching yesterday out on the street in particular in uh, harlem number four which is a, this is a still from it right here and um, if you haven't watched this video when you do watch it okay and it's on the channel GMS this is the channel here that we put our, our street speaking videos on you know uh, the camp that consists of Elder Apostle Taha, uh, myself Elder Apostle Ramlam and Bishop Sakharan. All right, we put this, um, we put the speaking videos on this channel right here, GMS Apostles Street Ministry. Okay, so for those of you that are wondering where our speaking videos are, it's on this channel right here because uh, my purpose is to build up this channel. It has no strikes. Okay, let me show you again. This channel here. You shall never fall. GMS Apostle Street Ministry. It has no strikes, unlike the other channel that the, vi the speaking videos were going up on. This channel has no strikes, so I'm attempting to build up this channel. All right, and uh, for now, that's where the videos will be. The street speaking videos. All right, so. Uh, Yesterday we were out there teaching in Harlem, like I said, and um, we encountered this guy, and it was like, pretty much it was a mental back and forth for at least three hours, at least. It may be a little shorter, it may be a little longer, but at least for three hours we're going back and forth with this guy, okay? And, um, you know, among the many observations that I observed, one of them was this guy acted as if 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 he didn't believe in the ministry we were, we were teaching which he didn't really he didn't that that would affect us that some way somehow we would be messed up by that you know that's the mentality that these people have that uh you know that uh they don't accept our ministry they don't accept the gospel that we're coming with which we're coming with the truth we're coming with the hundred percent truth and they don't accept it beginning with that they're an Israelite believe it or not this guy didn't want to accept that he was an Israelite <laughs> and there's even the part in the video where he says that us teaching him that it that he's an Israelite is an insult we're like what the Israelites, according to the Bible, man, the Israelites are the chosen people of the Heavenly Father. All right? There are plenty of scriptures that prove that. You know, and, and even the Heavenly Father himself, which his name is Yahweh, right? Even he speaks highly of his people. All right? You know, even he speaks highly of his people that he have chosen. Okay? And then, you know, also tells us, why he brought us down as a nation because of our stubbornness our wickedness so he brought us down as a nation he, he inflicted curses upon us and you can find those curses in the book of deuteronomy the 28th chapter beginning at the 16th verse all the way to the 68th verse and guess what we're still under those curses the only one that can liberate us from those curses is the one the world calls Jesus Christ, which his name is Yahweh Shai. Okay, he's coming. One of the many reasons why he's coming 
uh, the first being uh, to look, um, to uh, set up his kingdom on the planet earth and this is according to Bible prophecy the heavenly father Yahweh have given him the earth to to rule in righteousness you know Yahweh Shai that's found in the book of uh, uh, second that's found in the book of second Psalms all right the second Psalm okay so one of the main reasons why he's coming besides that to set up his his kingdom on the on the planet earth i'm talking about yahweh shai which the world calls jesus christ ignorantly calls jesus christ uh the other reason is to liberate us us israelites beginning with the elect of the nation of israel to liberate us from these curses that we're under and like i said you can find the curses in the book of deuteronomy the 28th chapter beginning at the 16th verse all the way to the 68th verse all right the curses that we are under okay so um you know we're the israelites we're the lord's chosen people we're the greatest people on the planet earth and when you tell say uh, when you tell certain jakes that like again yesterday when we we're dealing with this guy they find that as an insult so this leads me back to the title all right of this video you know just because you don't accept our ministry you don't accept the truth all right that's not going to affect us okay that is not going to affect us all right and uh uh the scripture that comes to mind is the book of uh romans the third chapter right romans the third chapter i'm going to begin at the uh, third verse well you know what let me start at the first verse because it, the scripture shows us the advantage of being a hebrew israelite okay uh romans the third chapter the first verse again these are the words uh spoken by the apostle paul it actually was a, a letter that he wrote to the israelites living in rome okay to the israelites living in rome all right, so Romans, the third chapter, begin at the first verse. What advantage then have the Jew? All right, so another word for the Jew would really be an Israelite. Okay, would really be an Israelite. But uh, the tribe, the or the nation of Israel, rather, starts with the tribe of Judah, which that's where you get the word Jew from. <coughs> All right, the tribe of Judah. <coughs> What, ad what advantage then have the Jew, or what profit is there of circumcision? What profit is there of circumcision? Meaning what? Following the laws, statutes, and commandments. Now, um, this is why when you read the next verse, it says, much every way. Because those laws, those statutes, those commandments the Heavenly Father gave us as Israelites elevates us above all the nations. All right? That's why, that's why they were given to us. And here's the proof. When you go in the book of Deuteronomy, the fourth chapter, uh, Deuteronomy literally means second book of the law. The law was only given to who? The Israelites. Psalm, the 78th chapter, the fifth verse. For he established a testimony in Jacob and appointed a what? A law in Israel. So now, this, uh, the question that the Apostle Paul asked here, what advantage then have the Jew? Or what profit is there of circumcision? Here's the answer. A huge advantage. A huge advantage as us being Israelites. A huge advantage over all the other nations. This is the book of Deuteronomy, the fourth chapter. The fifth verse. Now, these are the words of the Heavenly Father speaking to his man Moses. Right? He said this. He said, Behold, I have taught you statues and judgments even as the lord my god commanded me that you should do so in the land whither you go to possess it right so this is moses really this is moses speaking to the israelites okay and he's speaking on behalf of the heavenly father yahweh okay it says keep therefore and do them do what the laws statutes and commandments and there's over six well actually there's 613 laws that the, that the heavenly father had you know have given us okay now there's certain laws that um sacrificial laws that are done away with 
and it's, it's done away with in what the world calls Jesus Christ, which his name is Yahweh Shai. This is why we don't have to sacrifice animals anymore. We don't have to sacrifice oxen. All right, we don't have to sacrifice turtle doves. We don't have to do that anymore because Yahweh Shai covered our sins. The reason why we sacrificed animals back then was for our sins. So Yahweh Shai covered our sins, beginning with the sins of the elect. All right, so we don't have to do that anymore. So there's certain sacrificial laws that are that are done away with okay but there are still other laws which the heavenly father gave us that are still uh, lawful to this very day that we're supposed to keep that we can keep like having a, a beard on our face okay that that is a law that that an israelite man is supposed to have a beard on his face he's not supposed to shave his beard off okay that's heathenist, heathenistic to say the least all right the law on being a, a mole you know let me just say it that way. We're not supposed to be Moes. There's not supposed to be a Sodomite in the nation of Israel. There's not supposed to be a whore in the nation of Israel. Okay? That's another law. So I'm just giving you examples of laws that still should be kept to this very day. How about the law of not eating pork? All right? We're not supposed to eat pork. Okay? There you go. So, uh, again, Deuteronomy 4 and 6. Keep therefore and do them. For this is your wisdom and your, understa and your understanding in the sight of the nations. That's all the other nations outside the nation of Israel. Which includes the Edomites, the Moabites, the Hamites, the Ammonites. Which those nations are still around to this very day. They're just under different names today. All right, The Edomites in particular would be what you call so-called white people. Okay, Those are the Edomites that the Bible speaks of. Okay, now am I saying all so-called white people? Of course not. If you follow our videos, you would know that we, in particular, Great Millstone, we teach that the nation of Israel is scattered among all nations. So you're going to have so-called white people looking like Edomites that are actually Israelites because their line, their lineage goes back to so-called black people. Okay, all right, so, um, you know, that's another topic for another time. This is topic we've touched on many times you know uh, in a great millstone beginning with Elder Pasta on down our videos so uh, if you want to know more about that you just got to search our videos all right and you'll and you'll find you'll find a video dealing with that topic but anyway going back to uh, the sixth verse Deuteronomy 4 and 6 keep therefore and do them for this is your wisdom and your understanding in the sight of the nations all right, which shall hear all these statues and say, surely this great nation is a wise and understanding people. So you, you see the big advantage? Oh, wait a minute, let's go back and see what the Apostle Paul said here. What advantage then have the Jew or what profit is there of circumcision? There you go, much every way. And I'm giving you an example using scripture. Okay, Deuteronomy 4 and 6. Keep therefore and do them. Do what? The statutes and judgments, right? For this is your wisdom and your understanding in the sight of the nations, which shall hear all these statutes and say, Surely this great nation is a wise and understanding people. For what nation is there so great who have the Heavenly Father so nigh or near unto them as the Lord our power is in all things that we call upon him for? See? See, so all of this proves that we, as Israelites, are the Lord's chosen people. And there are certain Israelites, when you, you come out there on the street and you bring this information to them, they're offended. Okay, like the individual we were dealing with yesterday at the camp, right here. Okay, he, he doesn't appear on camera, he's behind the camera, but you can hear his voice. His, his sometimes his irritating voice. <laughs> And we dealt with this guy for more than, what, three hours, or almost three hours at least, going back and forth from like a mental gymnastics, extra, a men, mental gymnastics ad nauseum, to the point of nausea with this guy, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. It's almost like it was a test. And I think it was. I think it was a test from <laughs> Yahweh Shabbat and all of us were sick. We still are sick. Okay, 
But, you know, like my man Paul Kersey, shout out to Paul Kersey. Like my man Paul Kersey said, uh, you guys were chosen to do this. You were chosen to tell us something we don't know, bro. You preaching to the choir, my friend. We know that we were chosen to do this. We've been doing it for more than 30 years. Apostle Elder Tar, I've been doing it for more, more than, what, 35 years. Okay, this is what we signed up for. And, uh, you know, we're, yeah, we, you get to the point where you start complaining, shit. <laughs> Anybody who's, you know, who, who's done this work for more than as long, that long, knows the, the uh, uh, what's the word I'm trying to look for? Know the, uh, the, um, the compounding, for lack of a better word, the compounding effects of, of, of dealing with that, man. The mental stress, okay? <laughs> you, you, guys, you guys have no idea what we go through, man. You really don't, man. All right? <laughs> but anyway, I'm not, this is not a video for me to start belly aching. You know, you hear a little violin in the background playing and shit, you know? But, like I said, the title of this video is, uh, you, this is a message to you people that, you know, some of you get off for of not accepting this gospel and you think that's going to hurt us. It doesn't hurt us, man, all right? Because we understand, number one, we understand that this gospel is only for the elect, okay? That just means you're not part of the elect. And you know we kept telling that dude at the camp, we kept telling him, listen, man, you, you're just not part of the elect. And then we even told him, according to the scripture, God have blinded you. That's what we told the guy. We said, look, God have blinded, which indeed is the truth. The only ones that can understand this knowledge this truth is the ones god have not blinded okay these people <laughs> oh man these people have no idea man what you know they they just have they they, they understand it is very little very little okay here it is right here and we read the scripture at the camp isaiah 6 and 9 and he said go and tell this people hear ye indeed but understand not yeah that's that's exactly what happened yesterday at the camp. We're we're telling this guy the truth, telling him how great it is to be a Hebrew Israelite, how we're the chosen people. You know, he even told us about how his he and his woman had a fallout, and and uh, uh, um, I think she took the kid. He, they, there's you know, uh, and we tried to tell him, well, those are the curses. He said, no, no, those are not the curses. What are you gonna do for an individual like that? That is the curse. You go in the book of Deuteronomy 28 and uh, begin that. Well, we even read the scripture, Deuteronomy 28, chapter the 56th verse. Uh, matter of fact, you know what? Let me just get it. It'd be easier for me to get it and read it. We are under curses, man. But a lot of these Israelites, they don't want to hear that. They just don't. They, this is why the Lord said that his people are stiff-necked, stubborn, hard-headed hard people, man. I mean, this is a hell of a nation, man. Deuteronomy 28 chapter, this is what we read to this guy. Deuteronomy 28 chapter, the 56th verse. The tender and delicate woman among you, which would not adventure to set the sole of her foot upon the ground for delicateness and tenderness. Her eye, meaning her mind, that's what that means. Her eye shall be evil toward the husband of her bosom and toward her daughter and toward her, I'm sorry, and toward her son and toward her daughter there it is right there man okay this is this is one of the main reasons why so-called the so-called black man and the so-called black woman cannot get along we're under curses it's a simple answer right the guy didn't want to accept it then he comes with this crazy reason or reasons why he and his woman broke up all right so at this point you you know you don't really you just really don't want to talk to our people and then you have these guys right that come on our comment board well why don't you guys go to the ghetto right why don't you why don't you go to the ghetto and teach our people go to the ghetto and teach our people that's what you're supposed to do well here we are in the ghetto right here harlem you can't get more ghetto than that harlem usa baby we're out there teaching the word right you notice nobody ain't, look, ain't ain't around us listening. That's number one. Number two, one guy who did come up, the guy was a, the, the guy was a freaking pain in the ass. Okay, <laughs> I mean, he was a, look, he was a freaking pain in the ass. And if you don't believe me, just watch this video. Okay, all right. 
And if you have any kind of honesty within you, after listening to watching this video, you will say, yeah, um, uh, Apostle Gabar, what he just said is right. The guy was a freaking pain in the ass. And all we were hitting him with was truth bombs. Okay, truth bombs. And then you had people coming up that were trying to tell this guy, look, these guys are teaching the truth. And he still didn't want to hear Talk about being stiff neck and stubborn, stubborn hearted and hard hearing, man. But again, this like my man Paul Kersey said, this is what we signed up for. <laughs> anyway, uh, Deuteronomy 2856. Well, no, I read that. I already made the point. Let me get back on, on track here. Isaiah 6 and 9, it says, And he said, Go and tell this people, Hear ye indeed. There you go. But understand not. And that, man... All you got to do is watch that speaking video. All right. You, you'll see that example in living color. Hear ye indeed, but understand not. And see ye indeed, but perceive not. Make the heart of this people fat. Meaning what? No understanding. That's what that means. That's just a dark saying. Uh, a dark saying way of saying no understanding. Okay. This, you know, the Bible is written in metaphors and allegories and and dark sayings, right? Make the heart, which the word heart, if you go into Hebrew, the word there would be lab, which means mind. It says, make the heart of this people fat and make their ears heavy, meaning no understanding. And shut their eyes, lest they see with their eyes and hear with their ears and understand with their heart, meaning their mind, and convert. Now the word convert literally means with truth. Con means with, vert means truth. And understand with their heart and convert and be healed. Be healed of their what? Of their sins, of their wickedness, and ultimately of their mind. Now your mind is thinking straight. Now you, now you, uh, um, you know, really now you're sane. Because the majority of our people are insane. Insane means the mind is not clean. So when you come into this knowledge, into this truth, your mind is cleansed. Okay, let me, let me show you that. This is... Building on what Yahweh Shai said. Uh, the book of John, what is that, 15? This, this word, this understanding, this knowledge, this truth, cleanses our minds. Okay, here it is right here. John 15 and 3. Now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. There you go. And we're speaking the same words that Yahweh Shai spoke to his people more than 2,000 years ago. Okay, we're speaking those same words, brothers. Matter of fact, let me unplug this. Uh, let me bring out another scripture concerning that. Let's go to um, uh, so, uh, Psalm 119 and 9. Psalm 119 and 9. It says this. Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way? By taking heed thereto according to thy word. So the key word there is what cleanses way or cleanses mind. So you go from being insane to sane. That's what this knowledge does for us. It brings us from a state of being insane to sane. Now when you're insane, insane literally means your mind is not cleansed. Your mind is not clear. You're not thinking straight. If you're not involved in this knowledge, wisdom and understanding of this truth, you are not thinking straight. You are insane, okay? So when you come back to this knowledge, this truth, this understanding, when you have faith, beginning with faith in Yahweh Shai, right? According to the Bible prophecies, now your mind is sane. Now you're sane. Now you're a sane person, okay? So that's the beauty of having this, this knowledge, this great truth, man, okay? And again... Like I said, there are certain there are people, and that was demonstrated at the camp yesterday, that they ain't trying to hit. No matter how pretty you make it look, no matter how understanding you make it sound, they just don't want to hit. And that's the scripture right here. Isaiah 6 and 10, make the heart of this people fat, and make their ears heavy, and shut their eyes, lest they see with their eyes, and hear with their ears, and understand with their heart. And convert and be healed. Now you know what it means to be healed. All right. Uh, how did a young man cleanse his way? By taking heed thereto according to the word. Then said I, Lord, how long? So the angel 
uh, the angel um, said to the Heavenly Father, how long you want me to blind this people? Because basically the scripture goes into how the Heavenly Father sent an angel to blind this people. This is the example we're reading here. All right. And so the angel said, well, Lord, how long? And he, and he answered, the Heavenly Father answered, until the cities be wasted without an inhabitant. And, and this is where America, America is heading uh, to wasteland. Okay. America is heading to destruction, okay, and this is according to Bible prophecy. You know, I look at the word wasted, it reminds me of the scripture, Isaiah 54 and 16, how the Heavenly Father said he have created the, the missiles to destroy, to waste. And that's one of the agents that's going to destroy this place called America, the nuclear missiles, right along with the chariots of the Lord. So there is a day coming when this place is going to be totally destroyed. So all the people that were blinded, from not listening to the gospel, not listening to the truth, they're going to go up in flames right along with this place. They're going to be destroyed right along with this place. That's what I'm reading here. Then said I, Lord, how long? And he answered, until the cities be wasted without an inhabitant. Check that out. And the houses without man and the land be utterly desolate. There you go. So the ones the Lord have blinded, like, our boy yesterday, if he if he doesn't wake up, when America's destroyed, he gonna be destroyed right along with it. And do you know we told the guy, look, America's gonna be destroyed according to Bible prophecy. He wasn't trying to hit. He actually thinks some way, somehow, that <laughs> that America is is gonna uh, bounce back and is gonna be this great kingdom it once was. It once was. So what do you do if, you see, this is what we're dealing with, okay? But again, these guys, why don't you go to the ghetto and set up a camp? Go to the ghetto and set up a camp and teach your people. That's what you got to do. That's what you're supposed to do. Go to the ghetto and set up a camp and teach your people. <laughs> uh, again, the Lord is only here for... The, the word is only here for the elect. The Lord is only here for the elect. Okay, let's read it. Uh, and that's why your unbelief don't affect us. Now, I'm going to get that scripture in Romans. But let me get the one in uh, Romans. I'm, yeah, Romans. Let me get the one, Romans, the third chapter, that is. But let me get the one in, in Romans, the 11th chapter. Show you that this knowledge, this truth is only for the elect. That's why we don't get offended if you people come up and listen and you and you, you you fan your hand at the word and you and you scoff at it and you scorn at it you're not affecting us man you are not affecting us because we have come to the understanding the realization that this knowledge this truth is only for the elect okay so we we just want to let you know that Romans the 11th chapter the 7th verse there it is in black and white okay right here what then Israel have not obtained that which he seeketh for? But the election, the election have obtained it, and the rest were blinded. You see that? Now, earlier I read the scripture in Isaiah 6 and 9, how long they're going to be blinded for? Make the heart of this people fat. The rest were blinded. This is the cold deal, man. The Lord is only looking for his elect, a small number. Let me give you an example. Just like in Noah's day, Noah was the elect of his day. Everybody else died, man. Everybody else perished. It was just Noah, uh, his wife, uh, Noah's sons and their wives. They're the only ones that made it. A total of eight people. Think about that. A total of eight people at that time on the planet Earth during the time of Noah that made it. Everybody else perished. Everybody else drowned. Do you know how horrible a death drowning is? That's just as horrible as being burnt alive, drowning, okay? <laughs> so, again, Noah was the elect of his day. So, is it not written as in the days of Noah? Wait a minute. Is that not written? Let me get that for you. I told you, man, through the power and spirit of Yahweh Shem Yahushua, we have 100% truth, Okay? And this truth is only for the elect of the nation of Israel. That's it. When Yahweh Shai comes, we read that scripture yesterday at the camp. Matthew, the 24th chapter, beginning at the 30th verse. When Yahweh Shai comes, who's he only going to gather, huh? Who's he only going to deliver? His elect. Clearly tells you that. 
All right, Matthew 24 and 37. But as the days of Noe, Noe is short for Noah, if you didn't know. But as the days of Noe were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. See? And we're in those days now. We're in the days of the coming of the Son of Man. The Son of Man is another title for our Lord, Yahweh Shai. It's just a title. His, his true name, his proper name is Yahweh Shai. Son of Man is just a title. He has many titles, but one name, one proper name. What's that one proper name? Yahweh Shai. That's the proper name of our Lord. And, and that's in ancient Hebrew. Okay? Uh, reading on, it says, For as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage. They were doing that back then, during the time of Noah. And then they were making fun of Noah too, when Noah was out there building that ark on dry land and telling them that the days, the days are coming when it's gonna be raining upon the planet Earth. Man, they made, they, they made total sport and total mockery of Noah, just like they do us. Just like my man, at, <laughs> my man yesterday at the camp, trying to make sport of us. He was trying to make sport of us but we were making sport of him. He, you know, he was making sport of us, but we were making sport of him. Like I said, it was a, it was a mental back and forth. All right, a tugging back and forth. Okay? And we endured that for what? More than three hours. Okay? But you know what? Our, that, our zeal and our determination was seen yesterday by Yahweh Bashim Shai. Okay, that's what counts, all right? Anyway, for as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the day, listen good, until the day that, the, that Noah, uh, Noah entered into the ark and knew not until the flood came and took them all away. So guess what? This time is going to be a flood of fire, all right? Back then it was a flood of waters. This time it's going to be a flood of fire. There's, that's where you get your lake of fire from. And a lot of Israelites are going to die in that lake of fire, man. As it is written, the slain of the Lord shall be many, man. And knew not until the flood came and took them all away. And it, was, it didn't take them away on a vacation either. It took them away to their deaths. <laughs> So shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. There you go. There you go, man. But again, who, who, who are the ones that's going to be delivered out of that? Let's get back to the scripture, Romans 11 and 7. What then Israel have not obtained that which he seeketh for? But the election. See, there is an election, people. That's why we don't get bent out of shape and mad that you don't want to accept the gospel. You, that just means you ain't part of the elect. That's all that means. Let me say that again. We're not going to get mad and bent out of shape if you don't accept this gospel, man. It's only for the elect. The elect of the nation of Israel. That's it. Okay? But the election have obtained it. And our boy yesterday at the camp, he was not part of the elect. Because if he was, he would have accepted the gospel. Okay? He would have accepted it and moved on. And that's the thing. It is, you know, you've, you've clearly made you, you, you know, the guy who came yesterday, he clearly made his stance. He, 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 was, he didn't want to take part in what we were involved in. He, and uh, he belittled it and had every excuse in the book not to accept it. But then he's still ha hanging around us. Why are you hanging around us for? Our people are something else, man. They're, they're, they're like demons. Okay, they're just vile demons. <laughs> Hey, man, when I got home yesterday, I had to take a shower, man. Normally, I don't take a shower when I get home. I get home real late. I said, man, I'll take a shower in the morning. Nah, nah, nah. Yesterday, I had to go take a shower, man. I had to wash, off the, wash that Harlem dirt off of me, man. Okay, especially Harlem. When you go to Harlem, man, pfft, my God. Anyway, Romans 11 and 7. You, you know what? I think when Ezekiel saw the Valley of the Dry Bones... He, he specifically saw Harlem. <laughs> he specifically saw Harlem, man. He had to have. All right? Because if there, ever place, if there was ever a place called the Dry Bone Valley, it would have to be Harlem. And well, you know what? The, the, the truth started in Harlem. So, so there you go. The school, matter of fact, where, we, where we're speaking here, 
ain't wasn't too far from the school. Okay, the school in uh, 1 West 125th Street, where we're speaking at, what, wasn't really that far. Okay? Harlem is, a, Harlem is a special crowd, boy, I tell you. Any of you brothers think you, you got strong minds, go to Harlem and, 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 and set up this gospel and start teaching. You brothers from around the world that's involved in this ministry, go to Harlem and start teaching. You'll see what I'm talking about. You'll see it real, real quick, too. The people that the people that dwell there. Anyway, Romans eleven and seven. What then Israel have not obtained that which he seeketh for, but the election have obtained it, and the rest were blinded. There you go. According as it is written, the heavenly Father have given them the spirit of slumber, eyes that they should not see, and ears that they should not hear unto this day, like our boy yesterday at the camp. And David saith, Let their table be made a stand, a trap, and a stumbling block, and a recompense unto them the table is, is a metaphor for this bible this understanding this truth right let their eyes be darkened that they may not see like our boy yesterday okay and bow down their back all way there you go all right so again this is only for the elect the elect again the seventh verse is what then israel have not obtained that which you seek it for they're looking for the truth but the election have obtained it and the rest were blinded that, that says it all right there. So again, um, to conclude this lesson, uh, let's go to Romans, the third chapter. We're not affected by your unbelief, you, you people out there, all right? Just so you know. Okay, Romans, the third chapter, the third verse now. For what if some did not believe? Shall their unbelief make the faith of God without effect? Right. Is your unbelief another thing too? Is your unbelief going to stop prophecies from rolling along? The answer is no. Okay, let's let's read the next verse. God forbid, yea, God forbid means no, by the way. God forbid, yea, let God be true, meaning this Bible be true, which is we're teaching the truth of this Bible, 100% truth of this Bible. Let me say that again. We are teaching 100% truth of this Bible, which is only given to the elect of the nation of Israel, point blank, end the story. Okay, as a, as a matter of fact, a scripture I like to quote is the, the one I just quoted earlier about Yahweh Shai, when he comes back, who is he going to gather? Matthew 24 and 30. He's only going to gather his elect from the four corners of the earth. The, the, the majority of the elect being delivered from, from right here in America, being delivered from America, which is known as Babylon the Great in the Bible. Okay, God forbid, yea, let God be true, meaning let the, let the word of God be true. Meaning teach the truth, teach his words, not our words, his words. That's what it means, yea, let God be true. Meaning teach his words. Our job is to say what God has said. That's our job. That's the job of a prophet. The word prophet means say before. We're not saying our words, okay? We're saying the words of God, what he has said. Let me, let me uh, back that up with the scripture here. Uh, John... 3 and 34. These are the words of our Lord, Yahweh Shai. He said this, John 3 and 4. Um, no, that wasn't uh, Yahweh Shai. That was um, John the Baptist. No, my bad. John 3 and 34. For he whom God hath sent, which his name is Yahweh, right, speaketh the words of God. See? For he whom God hath sent, this is how you know God hath sent um, uh, have, have sent a man which would be a prophet he would do what let's read for, for he whom God have sent speaketh the words of God for, for God giveth not the spirit by measure unto him there you go and his name is Yahweh his son's name is Yahweh Shai and we, we speak that's another thing we brought out to this guy because he kept saying well how you know that, that you're the true teachers and how you know what you're teaching is the truth. We told them it's the Holy Spirit. There's something called the Holy Spirit that works with you in tandem in the ministry. Okay? We speak according to the Holy Spirit. All right? We speak according to the Holy Spirit. The, the, the Holy Spirit. Matter of fact, you know, um, uh, what scripture can I bring out here? Exodus? Yeah, Exodus, the fourth chapter. Something that the Heavenly Father told Moses when Moses said that he couldn't speak, this is what the Heavenly Father told him. Exodus, the fourth chapter, 
and uh, the eleventh verse. And the Lord said unto him, Who have made man's mouth? Or who maketh the dumb or deaf or seen or the blind? Have not I the Lord? Right. That's right. That's true. Because you can't see this truth unless the Heavenly Father opened up your mind to see this truth. Okay. It's just that plain. Uh, the twelfth verse. Now therefore go and I will be with thy mouth. See? So we, the, the, the Heavenly Father was with our mouths. Uh, yesterday, when we, when we were out there teaching on the street, he was with our mouth. Now, therefore, go, and I will be with your with thy mouth, and teach thee what thou shalt say. See? So, the Holy Spirit of the Heavenly Father, through his only begotten Son, teaches us what to say. Okay? Because we are there to speak God's words, speak his words. Okay? Alright, so your unbelief. Your unbelief does not affect us. Anyway, finishing up in the fourth verse, Romans 3 and 4, God forbid, yea, let God be true, but every man a liar. See? Even us, if we're not, guess what? If we're not speaking the words of God according to what is written in the Bible, then we're liars. And, and no one should really listen to us. But that ain't the case. We speak in the truth of Yahweh Bar Shem Shai, that's the ancient Hebrew of the names of the Heavenly Father and the Son, we are speaking the truth in the spirit, the Holy Spirit, of Yahweh Barshim Yahushai. Okay? He that has to hear, let him hear. And the elect will hear. Okay? As our Lord once said, uh, wisdom is justified of her children. Okay? Um, God forbid, yea, let God be true, but every man a liar, as it is written, that thou mightest be justified in thy sins, and mightest overcome when thou art judged. See? So when they try to put us on trial, look, we're going to come out sp smelling like, as they say, like roses. Because we're speaking the words of God. We're speaking the words of the Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son. Which is only given to the elect of the nation of Israel anyway. Alright? That's why we're not going to be, uh, uh, we're not going to be emotional if someone doesn't accept this knowledge, this truth. But these people think that we are. Okay, that shows you their limited understanding. No, we're not. That's the message of this video. We're not emotional if you don't accept this truth. It just means you ain't part of the elect. It's not for you. Hey, there's some things that's not for, so for all people, man. <laughs> and this knowledge, this truth is one of them. For you people out there that don't accept it, this is just one of them. No, everything is not for everybody, man. All right. Okay, so at this point, I think I've said enough. Hopefully you were edified and on to the next one.